Good afternoon, everybody. <coughs> I hope you can uh, you can hear me clearly. Um, this part of the uh, of the day moves away from uh, and is quite separate from what we've seen so far. So uh, I was asked today to talk briefly on uh, the role of the Coca futures market and the options markets, and whether or not uh, what we what we have on offer at the moment is suitable for the needs of uh, of the industry. Is it, is it a good fit? I will start before I run through uh, where I'm going to go. Uh, just a, a couple of quick statistics. If you look at the combined open interest of the uh, futures markets, the ICE futures markets, which are both US and uh, and GBP denom denominated, they come to roughly 500,000 lots as of today. Um, and a statistic which is probably less well known is that the option open interest for the same two markets is actually running at 600,000 lots. Now, in my long career, I have never seen such an enormous uh, open interest, of the combined open interest. And so uh, I, it's tempting to say they must be doing something right. Anyway, today I'm going to look at uh, the advantages and disadvantages of having competing contracts and exchanges, and then a quick look, I promise it's not going to get too technical, on the, on the actual differences between ICE Europe and CME. I'm, I'm very aware that CME bought me lunch and ICE pays my bills, so I'm, it's, going to be, uh, it's going to be a very objective look rather than subjective look. Um, and then we'll look at the practical and theoretical, very briefly practical and theoretical cost of those trades and, uh, and a summary of the, uh, of the existing situation. So we have five COCA contracts. Um, five COCA contracts, gosh. Um, somebody here might remember when there was one, but uh, I only started when there were two. Uh, Five COCA contracts, we have two in US dollars, we have two in euros, uh, and we will have one in, G in GDP. Um, and the recent emergence of this competition has, uh, has come about uh, for a number of reasons. Um, the first one is the, it was the desire expressed by some members of the industry um, uh, for a euro-denominated contract to mitigate the GDP euro FX risk. If you were designing a, a, a contract uh, today, and if, it, if there wasn't a GBP contract, there is no way in the world that you would have uh, invented a GBP contract. With the importance of Europe as a, as a consumer, with the importance of the uh, link between the Euro and the CFA to West Africa, uh, it would be uh, a far more sensible denomination to have a COCA contract expressed in Euros. So the, the concern from the trade and from the industry is quite, uh, is quite understandable. Uh, in addition to that, there was uh, uh, a degree of dissatisfaction that circulated in the market concerning the way in which the old life contract, and particularly the rules of those, of those contract, the way in which they were interpreted. It became a little bit of a, of a guessing game um, as to whether or, uh, cash convergence or whether the, the underlying cash products were representing the futures markets or the behavior of the futures markets, particularly in the nearest position. And it was becoming very, very difficult for pretty much all the uh, trade and industry participants to, uh, to have a clear guidance as to which way uh, the rules were going to be interpreted for each, uh, each expiry as it came along. And uh, finally, um, there's a little bit of disquiet um, regarding the monopoly that was created when ICE bought the, uh, the life exchange. Um, so basically both COCA contracts, the US denominated US contract and the GBP denominated European contract are run by the same organization. I have to say, uh, in ICE's defense, they, uh, they've been a very, very successful exchange. Uh, and it is not, the, the disquiet that came from certain areas was really nothing to do with ICE as an exchange, but just to do with the pressures and, uh, uh, and some, of, some of the uh, discomforts that come with any, any kind of monopoly, however benevolent it might be. So, the advantages and disadvantages of having competing contracts and exchanges. Well, on a fairly simplistic level, competing contracts provide a variety of choices for users. I've just highlighted the different, uh, the different choices we have. Um, competing exchanges can safeguard costs 
and when I was referring to the monopoly that was created earlier in the year, that is one of the sort of primary concerns. I would, I would, as I come from a brokerage house, one of the underlying driving forces is always to try to make sure that uh, the costs of trading are as efficient as they possibly can be. And very often this is uh, more efficiently policed through competition uh, than any other way that I can think of. Um, competing exchanges also help to ensure the relevance of the contracts. Again, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, the, the way in which uh, the rules of the, 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 of the old life contract were being uh, interpreted uh, and the way in which uh, cash convergence seemed to be diverging from, from that particular contract uh, without the, the significant competition that, at that time, there was a danger that uh, nothing would be done to correct the, the problems of a couple of years ago. So uh, having a competing exchange and competing, competing contracts can certainly help to keep the contracts relevant. However, it's not, it's not a one-way street. Um, if you have too much uh, competition, you can di dilute liquidity. Liquidity is the lifeblood of any futures and options market. Um, and if we were, for instance, to have a division, let's say, into five of all the five competing contracts at the moment, I would suggest that none of them would have sufficient liquidity for the industry, uh, industry needs as they are. Um, the, other, the other disadvantage is different, differing regulatory jurisdictions can lead to regulatory arbitrage, which simply means you can get people setting up in uh, different uh, jurisdictions and avoiding the rules and regulations that particular exchanges or particular uh, um, governing bodies, ruling bodies, might wish to, uh, uh, to impose upon those particular exchanges. Um, and finally, if you have competing exchanges, and if you're trading two different exchanges, you don't get any initial margin offsets, initial margins being the amount of money you have to put up as a, as a deposit if you wish to trade a futures or an options contract. Now, what I'm going to look at now is, and I'm going to be fairly quick.